Welcome back to Nate's Woodworks. I decided to make something a little different for the family this last Christmas. I think handmade gifts are always better, and these wooden rings were a perfect way to give everybody something different that they've not seen before. I started by getting two rolls of veneer from my local home center. You've got to be careful because a lot of these come with an iron-on backing that's already on the back side of the veneer for easy application. These weren't quite as bad as that, but they were laminated with some sort of paper backing that I thought sort of detracted from the overall look at the end, so I didn't use a whole lot of it. I did use some of it, particularly the maple, to give a nice contrast with some mahogany that I used later on. Speaking of mahogany, I used some scraps of it and threw it up on the bandsaw and cut my own veneer, which ended up turning out much better than I would have thought. The challenge is keeping it as thin as possible without getting some tear out. My table saw fence would not allow me to do that, so I used the bandsaw. If you do have a decent table saw with a good fence, you should be able to get a nice thin piece of veneer without much of a problem. Cut the veneer into thin strips, slightly wider than you want the rings to be since you will be sanding and shaping them quite a bit. After all of the strips were cut, I put them into a boiling water bath for about two hours. I've heard that you can do this in the microwave, but I've not tried it myself. I think the steam from the boiling water does a really good job of loosening up the fibers. Once you remove it from the water, you want to wrap them around something round and then tape them. I just used the handle of one of my craft knives. Let these sit overnight until they dry and then you can untape them. See all the cool coils you've made. You can see here that some of my veneer was a bit too thick, and instead of bending nicely around the handle, it more or less snapped and made square edges and angles. You can either boil these for a little longer, or just do what I did and make a whole bunch of extras so that you have some in case they fail. Next I sanded the ends of the veneer strips and then tapered them on the end. This helps with sanding later and it gives you a nice transition on the inside surface of the ring when you're wrapping them. I took the ring sizes that I needed and found the closest deep well socket that I had in that size and put a layer of packaging tape on it. This helps the glue not stick to the socket and helps with the taking off of the ring later on. I would recommend that you pick a socket slightly smaller than what you want to end up with since you're going to be sanding the inside wall of these rings and you want it to be comfortable to wear. I ended up using a 14mm and a 12mm socket for the two sizes of rings that I needed. You will want to find the lowest viscosity CA glue that you can find. I don't recommend using the gel type since it doesn't soak into the wood fibers very well. I think you could probably get away with it, but I didn't want to chance it, so I found a nice with liquidy one. Now moving just a little bit at a time, I would add glue and then roll the veneer onto the socket and the previous layers of the ring.
your CA glue will squeeze out of the edges, so I would recommend putting a layer of packaging tape down on the work surface as well as the sockets, just to avoid the ring sticking to everything. Speaking of it sticking to everything, you will get this stuff on your fingers, but I found that out to be much less troublesome than wearing latex gloves, which I did try. That CA glue sticks really well to latex. Once the glue is set, you can remove it from the socket, and then I repeated the same process for all of the strips of veneer and to make them into the rings. You can also use a piece of cut-off wood. I used a piece of plywood here just to hold back the roll of veneer as you glue it up. This makes it a little bit easier to see where you're gluing and able to manipulate the veneer a little bit better. Next is the first of many stages of sanding. I used 60 grit sandpaper here to remove as much material as I could quickly, but you want to be careful because you, all you're looking to do at this stage is just make a nice even edge on all of the layers of the ring on both sides. Next I placed my multi-tool into a portable craft drill press that I've got and used a small sanding drum to touch up the inside surfaces of the ring. After that, I used the same drum to sand the outside surface. Next, I used what I'm going to call a diamond chamfer bit, which is basically a cone shape on a stick to put a slight chamfer on the inside and outside edges of each ring. This makes putting them on and taking them off much easier. Now, you could stop here and put a finish on them, but what's the fun in that? So I decided to take two of the rings and have a contrasting center section. So I cut each ring on the bandsaw to make sort of wafers that I could sandwich together on top of each other. Once they were all sanded, I could glue the wafers together. Now there are a couple of ways you could do this. You can either cut the wafers of the two woods and try to mate them together, hoping that they're the same diameter, or you can use a small piece of the veneer and sandwich it between two of the darker wood wafers across the grain and then sand them to the same size. I like the second method better. It just works quicker because you don't have a whole lot of repositioning time with CA glue. I trim off the excess veneer with a bandsaw or since I was just right there at the table I used a hobby knife and then you're ready to do, guess what, sand again. Being really careful not to enlarge the inner diameter of the ring, I sanded the new cross grain wafer flush with the darker wafers and then did the same thing to the outside surface. On the three rings that were being made for my minions, I decided not to go with the wafer approach, but instead to put inlays on them. Um, my son loved Zelda growing up, so I wanted to make him a ring fit for Link. My middle daughter gets a copper banding, and my youngest gets a heart inlay. Laying down the pattern was a challenge, since I was trying to put a flat design on a round object. I ended up using the angle on one of my hobby knives to lay it out, which worked out pretty well. Then I used the diamond-coated bit to etch the pattern into the ring.
off camera I cut the inlays out of a small scrap of brass that I had from another project or what I thought was brass. It turned out to be sort of a brass coated nickel and I found this out later on when polishing and it turned silver on me. I used CA glue to put the pieces in place though later one of them did pop out while I was polishing so I ended up using E6000 glue to get that thing to stick properly. For the next ring, I used the same needlepoint bit to cut the inlay for the heart and then glued the heart inlay in place. The last ring was actually the easiest one to do. I simply used a cutting wheel for the multi-tool to make a groove in the center of the ring and then glued a strip of copper into it and then covered over the copper with more glue. And here we have the finished inlays. Fancy setting, huh? Hey look, more sanding. As a final step, I wanted to remove any tarnish or marks in the metals. So I applied some polishing compound that I normally use in my leather sharpening strop to the buffing wheel. There was a small unforeseen complication and while the buffing compound did make the metal look nice and made a really nasty dark green stain in the wood. So I ended up going back to a clean buffing wheel to remove as much of that as I possibly could. For the finish I decided to use boiled linseed oil since it brings out the really awesome grain of the red oak, mahogany, and maple. Safety notice for this video, make sure you dispose of any rags or towels that have the linseed oil on them properly since the oil does heat up while it dries and bunched up rags have been known to spontaneously combust if they're not flattened or disposed of properly with good ventilation. Once the oil finish had dried, I applied about 10 coats of spray polyurethane to the rings in my fancy schmancy spray cabinet here. Um, I did lightly sand with a, I think it was a thousand grit sandpaper before each of the last three coats just to make sure they were nice and smooth. And here we have the finished product. This was a pretty fun project and I really enjoyed watching them get opened um, on Christmas morning. So thank you for watching. Now go out and build something to make your world more beautiful. I will catch you on the next video.